We're going to look at creating a gradient or blended value scale. Unlike the other value scales we've worked on where they have been separate individual boxes, this one our goal is to try to ease up on pressure or increase pressure depending on if you start light or if you start dark using that circular shading technique, that smooth shading technique to create a gradient in which there's no distinguishable separation of values. We want them to blend from one into the other. If I start in my darkest area, I of course want to use some good pressure. So I'm going to keep my fingertips down near the point of my pencil. And again, the key to working in the circular shading technique is to overlap and overlap often. We want to get rid of any gaps between our pencil strokes. Remember, we don't want to work in rows. We want to move out and come back and move out and come back to fill up the space. Also be careful of pressure. Remember we don't want our paper to buckle. We don't want it to stretch out. So I'm just using a number two graphite pencil, a regular HB to create these values. So it's only going to give me a certain amount of darkness with this graphite. And every once in a while, I may want to rotate the tip of my pencil. If you watch the video on how pencils are made, then you know that there is a small amount of wax mixed in to the graphite and the clay used to make a tube of pencil graphite. And that wax and the graphite and the clay, the friction that the fibers of the paper and the interaction of the pencil point moving across the fibers of the paper will sometimes create a burnishing effect on our pencil point. So it will get really shiny if you ever looked at it and sometimes you'll notice that no matter how hard you press the value just seems to be getting lighter even though you don't want that to happen yet. So what happens is that friction causes a kind of polishing effect, a burnishing of the pencil point and it's preventing any graphite from breaking off onto the surface of our paper or at least not as much. So every once in a while you do want to rotate your pencil point to kind of give a fresh area in which graphite can break off. If you notice an area where maybe it did get too light or you think there's too quick of a change in your values, then you can always go back to those areas. Notice if I do lift my pencil point from the paper, I always start back away from the edge in which I've lifted it from. This just kind of prevents a dark mark from occurring that I may not want. And my goal here is to try to create these values without any erasing. Erasing will change the texture of your paper. If you looked at the image of paper after it is you know, blown up by a microscope and you've seen those little fibers and we talked about how those fibers cause the graphite to break off.
those little fibers want to collect the graphite. So if I start near that edge, and especially if I've just rotated my pencil point, that's really soft graphite that's going to break off into those fibers and it could cause a dark mark that I don't want there. So I always start back a little bit further before I go near an edge. So I'm going to work on shading this and I may even speed up this section if I can get this into a video editor so you don't have to watch me in real time finish this. So again, I'm just going to work in the circular shading technique. I'm going to ease up on my pressure as I come across and I'm trying to prevent any sudden lines or change in value. And don't be afraid to also turn your paper. You want your hand comfortable when you're shading. Notice as, as I'm coming across, I am also easing up on my pressure. I'm checking it every once in a while, kind of observing it to see if there's areas where I have too sudden of a value change. And my fingers, I do adjust their grip on my pencil. I do try to start moving them away from that tip so that I can have a little bit less pressure near the point of my pencil. One little hint I have for you is as you do this and you're working your way across the paper, you would rather be a little bit too light and have to go back and darken an area than to be too dark because again we don't want to erase it changes the texture of the paper those little fibers get flattened down by the eraser And especially in a drawing you want to preserve the texture of your paper because it is very noticeable if you erase an area and try to shade back over top of it especially in a paper with a heavier tooth or texture to it I'm getting a little bit of a rough spot in my pencil point so I'm going to try to break that off. If you start to feel kind of like that scratchy feeling on your pencil point, try to stop and get rid of it on another sheet of paper. And that is because usually what happens is it's probably like a little chunk of clay that didn't get mixed in very well into the graphite. Um, graphite is of course softer than the clay. And if it breaks off while you're in the process of shading, you may end up with a little dark mark that you don't want. So if you ever start to feel that little scratchy feeling while you are shading, stop, take another sheet of paper, and try to get rid of that. So I want to bring my darker neutrals my darker values out here a little bit further. So 
So again, I do move my paper around a lot. If I feel my arm or my hand starting to cramp up from it being in the same position too long, then I will do this. So I'm trying to reduce the glare. So you can kind of see what's happening here with my value changes. It's one thing about trying to record working with graphite is that it is shiny. It does get very reflective. And again, I'm working back here. I want to bring my darks out a little bit further. So I've come back here to where it's dark. And I want to just drag those across a little bit more. Again, I want to try to see, got a little bit of a line separation there, so I want to try to blend this out a little bit more. So every once in a while you do want to stop and kind of look to see what you have, see if there are some lines of separation, and go back and work on those. If you do have to go back and darken, sometimes you don't need to match that same pressure. Sometimes it could be that line of separation showed up because of that polishing, burnishing effect of the pencil point occurred and you didn't realize it and you just need some fresh graphite down over top of that. And other times it may be because you lift it up on your pressure a little bit too much in an area. So you want to stretch this out and get as light as you can to blend it off into white. And your light ones, as you probably noticed already in your practices, are some of your most difficult values to get, especially with a number two pencil. Right. I do want to stretch this out a little bit more. And if your pencil ever gets dull, if it ever uh, breaks down, um, from a point then you do want to stop sharpen it and then I would suggest on a separate piece of paper kind of rolling the tip a little bit because when you sharpen it you're going to get a lot of dusty graphite on the outside and especially if you're working in your lighter areas you don't want any of that fresh soft dusty graphite that's sticking to that freshly sharpened point to fall off onto your shading So I'm not really applying a lot of pressure here as I stretch this across. I'm just adding more layers of graphite, which will also help darken it. And I've turned my pencil point a little bit to try to get some of that areas that aren't shined by the friction, don't have that polishing effect. And notice I'm using the tip of my pencil. I'm not laying my pencil down. I'm not using the side of it. You always want to shade with the tip of your pencil. The side of your pencil, that broader surface, leaves a texture that you don't want in your shading. So 
Let me get a little closer there. Just checking it, making sure. I'm blending out. I'm gradient. When you're in your lighter values, your grip on your pencil should be a lot softer. You shouldn't be holding the pencil in a heavy death grip because you don't need a lot of pressure on the point. You just want the point to kind of skim the surface of the paper to create those lighter values. Especially in lighter values, but most of the time when shading, my hand doesn't even rest on the table. It is up from the table because, again, I'm trying to use as much of that pencil point as possible. And I just want to fade off into white. So an HB pencil can get a pretty good light value. If you've worked with uh, drawing pencils before, and as I'm trying to shade it here so that we don't have the light shining on it, so that's not too bad. I might go back and in this area spread those out. Seems to be a little bit of a line there. So that's an area I had to go back and touch up. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how to create a blended gradient value scale using that circular shading technique.